All right, let's talk about this guy right here, ZSA's new keyboard, the Voyager. I already did an unboxing video that I just made as a short, so you can check that out if you kind of want to see what's inside the box. But in this video, I just kind of wanted to talk about my first impressions with it, and I've been using it for just a couple hours now. This morning, I've been using it for work, or at least trying to use it for work, and definitely still trying to get used to it. But I have to say that so far, I am really impressed by this keyboard. When I ordered this keyboard, I honestly wasn't planning on using it as my daily driver. I'm not really sure why I bought it, if I'm being honest. A big part of it was for this YouTube channel, but it's also over $400, so that's a big expense just for a YouTube video, and like, I <laughs> don't make enough money from this channel to justify the cost of this keyboard, but uh, I have a very weak prefrontal cortex, and so I just, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I, I, I had to get it, because it just, it looked so fascinating. And I also don't feel like I can talk about the Voyager without also talking about the Moonlander right here because they have so many similarities and also a lot of the critiques that I had of this keyboard and things that were in my wish list for a Moonlander Mark II keyboard are actually in the new Voyager. And so in a way, I'm almost thinking of the Voyager as an upgrade to the Moonlander. Now, there are some caveats to that because the Moonlander has 72 keys while the Voyager has 52. And, you know, there's pros and cons to that. It really comes down to personal preference. But personally, I think I like to have more keys than fewer keys. And a lot of you might feel the same. However, for those of you who don't already know, the reason why I started this whole keyboard journey was because I was trying to solve RSI that made typing so painful on a normal keyboard that I really had to go out and find something that was more ergonomic in order to save my career. <laughs> because, yeah, it... It, it would get really painful. However, with the 52 key layout, that might actually be better for my RSI because it should result in having fewer or smaller finger movements. And we'll see how that goes. So far, it's been feeling pretty good actually. With the Moonlander, when I start typing on it, really just after a few minutes of using the Moonlander, I can start to feel that like soreness and that pain coming back. But so far after using the Voyager for a couple hours now, I honestly, I don't feel anything. And that could be also a result of just using the Kinesis Advantage 360 Pro, which I still have over here, this guy. I've complained a lot about this keyboard, but it is really, it's, it's been a savior to my hands. And I have to feel grateful that a keyboard like this even exists in the first place. But I don't know, so far, I'm I'm really digging this keyboard. And at this point, I think we'll switch to a bird's eye view so that you can stare at the keyboard instead of my face. All right, now that we've got a bird's eye view, I should preface this, that this video is meant as a first impressions video, and I'll probably create a more in-depth video reviewing this keyboard after I've had at least a couple months to get used to it, because for keyboards like this, I really do think that you have to give them at least a couple of months to really get familiar and comfortable with it. And obviously, if you're coming from a keyboard like the Moonlander, or maybe something else kind of like it, maybe the Ergodox Easy, or I would even say the Kinesis advantage too, then this transition probably won't be as difficult, but it is still a new keyboard. I should probably also say that I did purchase this keyboard with my own money, and this is not sponsored by ZSA at all. But apart from the Moonlander, what are some things that are unique to the Voyager? Well, one of the things that I was very pleasantly surprised about was the back is made out of steel, and that gives it just an extra premium quality feel. And the case is very well made. I was a little worried at first that there might be some build quality issues, but I really don't see any of that. Looking here at the website, you can see on this picture that it looks like there's just a little bit of a space right there on this keyboard, and I'm guessing maybe this was like a prototype or something like that, but I've looked around this keyboard and I don't see any gaps like that at all. All the seams are flush and everything is put together very well. And I would say that, you know, the Moonlander was a very well-built keyboard. It is a very well-built keyboard, but this keyboard right here, like it just, it feels very, very solid. I have to say, I, I guess I've already said this, but like holding it, having it just here in my hands, like this feels like a premium keyboard. So we got the steel back. It's got these magnetic feet, which is a new addition that just kind of fit right on there. It was definitely something on the Moonlander that even though like you, you can tilt it, I had some qualms with it. Like it was kind of difficult to have to tighten it down every single time with the, the Allen wrench and make sure you get it in the exact same 
spot every single time, as well as some weirdness around this nut right here where you have to turn it in the opposite direction to tighten or loosen it as you do with all of the other pieces on the keyboard. And I mentioned in my review of Moonlander, like why that is and why it makes sense. But it was kind of nice to see that there's just a very simple and I would say elegant solution to tenting the keyboard using these little magnetic feet. The only thing I would say that you are kind of missing out on is this is the only height that you can have. So if I take these off, then you can have it flat or you can put them on. Like there is no in between and, and tenting it to your specific preferences. And you also can't just like put one of these feet on because if you do, then it, it rocks the same thing. I'll just slide this guy on. Like, yeah, it just has some rock in there. And so, yeah, you definitely have to have both on or none on. But I've been finding that I think it is a little more comfortable having them on. So on they go. And these magnets, they, they're they pretty strong. Like I, I have to work a, a little bit to get them off. It's a very strong connection. And these things aren't going to fall off. Like there's, there's no worries of these things falling off. And something else that is kind of interesting, you can see that the feet have slightly different symbols on them. So this one has two bars and that one only has one bar. And if you take it off, then if you see it in the camera, it matches up with the symbol right there and as well as right there. And if you try to put like this foot right here, which should go on this spot, if you try to put it right here, it actually won't fit on there because the little knobs on the, the bottom right here have a slightly different alignment. So it just like won't lock down inside of there. So it makes it pretty much impossible to put the wrong foot on the wrong hole. And then I guess I should, of course, mention that in the case, which, ooh, by the way, with the Moonlander case, I remember when I first opened it that the Velcro thing right here just ripped straight off. Well, either that was just a fluke or they improved on that because, yeah, that's sticking on there, no problem. But looking inside the case, uh, we do have this little metal plate right here and like it is metal like it feels really nice and you see that has some uh, laser etching right there so everything about this it just like it feels good i would say even the case it i think is probably the same material as the moonlander okay i went and grabbed it and who knows it's probably the same but the the stitching on this one does seem a little nicer does it or am I just making that up? I'm probably just making that up. Okay, I think I was making that up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the fabric is the exact same. Oh, this one is super dirty because it's been collecting dust over on my other table. But something else that is really nice about this case is it now has these little pockets. And this would have been really nice to have on the Moonlander case. Whenever you go anywhere with the Moonlander, you have to bring your Allen wrench around if you plan on tightening the legs and uh, tenting it at all. And it does have this little pocket right here. And that worked just fine. In fact, I probably would have left the pocket on there because that's really nice. But I also found myself always wanting to carry around extra like keycaps or other little doohickeys this guy right here to pull off the keycaps and having a little pocket for that would have been really nice. This was an excellent addition that they added to the case for the Voyager. And I'm really excited about that. Now I won't lose any parts. And when I open it up and pull it out, I can stuff keycaps inside of here instead of just having them like fall out and get all over the place. And yeah, the case, definitely an improvement here. Anyway, going back to this guy right here, the legs, they of course just fit in here, just like you would imagine. And uh, just like the bottom of the actual keyboard, this is very strong, like it sticks on there very strong. I don't think I would ever have to worry about these like accidentally getting like bumped off or something like that and losing them. Like these, that's sticking on there really good. It's a very strong magnet. As far as build quality goes, this feels definitely improved over the Moonlander. And then I guess I'll also talk about the keycaps right here because this is another thing that is a big difference between the Moonlander and the Voyager is the keycaps. So I guess real quick, just because I keep making comparisons with the Moonlander, the Moonlander has mechanical key switches. These are Cherry MX Browns on here. And that was something that I can't really say a criticism of the Moonlander because like that is a 
big personal preference of what kind of switches you like. And personally, I wish that there had been a version of the Moonlander that had had low profile switches. And I got that here with the Voyager, which by the way, if you're wondering, I did go with the red kale linear switches. But anyway, these switches, just like the Moonlander, are hot swappable. And it did come with a bunch of extra keycaps. I really would have liked to have like with the command stuff, it just saying CMD to actually have the Mac OS command symbol on there. And same with opt would have been nice to have the Mac OS option symbol. Well, we don't really have alt on Mac OS. It is option, but just the fact that there are key switches that say command on them and opt and alt is I think a pretty big win. And also it has these little dots for the keycap switches instead of on the moon lander, it had these little lines. And, and I think that was a good move to go with something different, but I mean, okay, we don't really need to get into that, but, but yeah, these are pretty easy to just pull off and switch with something else. And of course my kids just got home. So it sounds like there's a stampede upstairs. It's probably that, that or the dogs actually. So I just switch those out because I'm actually not using control or shift right here, which probably leads to the part that I'm most unsure of when it comes to this keyboard is it's it's got 52 keys. So it's not a 36 key layout, which is, I think is definitely the smallest that someone could reasonably use in my opinion. Of course there, you know, is that uh, one YouTube channel that I can't remember his name who does like a, <laughs> a ridiculously small keyboard, but that is not me. That's not my vibe. I really just want a keyboard that feels really good to type on and will help with my RSI and is also programmable because I, I think that's just so useful to have a programmable keyboard being a software engineer. But anyway, I have been having to tweak the keyboard layout that I'm used to that I used on the uh, Moonlander and that I ported over to the Kinesis Advantage 360, but that's just not gonna work here because you're missing these keys over here. So the bottom row and these keys and you lose one of your piano keys and whatever key this is called. And this maybe leads into the first criticism or critique that I have of this keyboard is I wish there was one more key on the thumb cluster. Just having these two keys right here, I, I've been having to make a lot of compromises to adjust for that. And for me specifically, I have issues with using my pinkies. I, I think that's probably one of the biggest sources of pain for me. One of the biggest aggravators of my RSI is when I use my pinkies a lot. And so maybe this keyboard will be a good thing for me. And maybe that's why I've been able to remain so comfortable and haven't really started feeling any RSI symptoms since using this is because I've been forced to not use my pinkies as much, which uh, on this keyboard and uh, honestly on the Kinesis too, although it's not as bad on the Kinesis because of the curved key well, which is still like, it, it is so, so comfortable. But on this keyboard, I stuck with using this for control and shift and tab and those keys get used a lot in programming. And so there's just this constant uh, pinky usage for control and alt, as well as uh, some contortions trying to hit the, the tab up here all the time. But one of the other nice things and kind of a, a saving grace of this keyboard was the extra piano keys where there's three. I didn't really use this one. This one was kind of awkward to hit, honestly, but like I, I took full use of these three piano keys as well as having these two keys right here, which I could utilize with my strong index finger. But with this keyboard right here, I don't have those extra keys out here on the outside. And so those are less keys that I can assign to two of my strongest fingers, my two index fingers. And other than that, I really only have one other complaint with this keyboard, and this is because of the key switches that I have. But if I change my background to white, I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera, maybe if I turn off the lights. So if you look at this closely, and yeah, I'm not sure if you will be able to see this on the camera, but the lights are kind of pink, which makes a lot of sense because you're shining a white light through these red switches. I don't know that <laughs> there's really anything that you could do about that, but if, let's look at the Moonlander. Moonlander, yeah, so these are brown, so I, I'm not sure. I didn't really notice that on the Moonlander, but it is something here where I'm kind of stuck with pink if I want white, but the white keyboard, I feel like the white lights just made it look like kind of elegant with the black one. I feel like with the black, you gotta have those RGBs. And by RGBs, I mean like colors. Okay, moving on to some things that I really like about this keyboard, which is a lot. 
and we've already talked about a couple of them, but these are some things that I feel like ZSA took from the Moonlander and learned some lessons from and improved on this one. And those of you who are astute observers may have already noticed that the layer lights are now right here on the keyboard instead of up here where they were on the Moonlander. And this is a really good improvement. On the Moonlander, like you just couldn't see where these these lights were when they were sitting down. Like you, you think you would, but like you really don't. You can't notice them unless you like kind of peer over to, to look at the, the keyboard. But these, when I switch to a layer, like I know I am on a different layer and that's something that is really, really nice. And now I'm asking myself for the first time, like what what do the, the different lights mean? Is that supposed to tell me I'm on layer five? This this should be layer five. Yeah, so that's layer five. Um, this is layer zero, of course. Layer one is this one. So that's one, two. Is there like a binary thing going on here? This one is three and four and five. Okay, so it looks like there's a kind of like a binary thing going on there. Okay, maybe not exactly binary, but um, there is definitely some kind of pattern going on there. But yeah, so layer lights right here, good. Something else that I've really appreciated with this keyboard is, so on the, the Moonlander, and I've had this complaint about both the Moonlander and the Kinesis Advantage, is in order to reset the board, you have to stick something inside a little hole like that. And while this one is a lot more accessible than it is on the Kinesis Advantage, which on the Kinesis, you probably can't even see it on camera, but it's like way down in there. Like you gotta go deep, but at least on the Moonlander, like it's accessible, but still, oh yeah, that was the other thing that I was always losing and that these pockets would have been really nice for on the Moonlander case would be to carry around a paperclip because before I realized that there was a button that you could program to just hit a key on the keyboard to put it into bootloader mode. For a while, I wasn't aware of that. And yeah, trying to reset it by sticking the paperclip in there was kind of annoying. But with this keyboard right here, they've changed it so that this is the reset button and it's like actually a button. So you don't have to carry around a paperclip or be aware of the actual reset button that you can assign to one of the keys. You can just push this button and you do have to push it kind of hard. So I don't see myself like accidentally pushing this, like brushing by even though with a little bit of pressure. Like you, you really gotta kind of push in on it for it to actually put it into bootloader mode, but it's super convenient to have it right there and an excellent addition. Anyway, uh, I guess they're, okay, I wasn't done with my criticisms. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the cables that it comes with, I'm still not in love with them. They, they still have this rubbery texture that I just don't like. And it is one of those things that I, I would change because I feel like having it this like nylon braided cable is, it just feels so much nicer and it doesn't like stick to things. It's easier to pull in and out of backpacks or like the, the carrying case. And it doesn't like grab other cords as easily when I'm like pulling on it. But uh, another thing that does ZSA, if you're, you're listening, I, I feel like this just really <laughs> needs to, I, I, I don't know, it doesn't need to be fixed, but it, it would be nice. So you, you see like in the, the videos or like on the website, right here, looking at the, the website, you have this nice straight cable. It doesn't have any weird kinks in it like this because it's been folded up and I don't know, maybe these kinks would come out eventually. They definitely don't look like they're as nice and straight as it shows in, in this picture, as well as in other pictures like, well, I can't find them, but you, you see you know, other pictures of people with this cable right here and how, how it has this nice little spiral. Mine is just like, okay. And I'm, I'm not talking about like those tight coils, like those, those would be nice. Actually, that would be cool to have a, a coiled cable instead of this, but even to have something that's just like spun around in a, a circle like this, it's nice and straight, that would be nice. You pull this out and it's just got all these kinks. But something else that is really cool that was included with the package is that there are three different lengths of USB-C cables. So this is something that I think is just awesome that they thought to include this is you can have this really short cable. So 
if you just have like this and your laptop, you don't have to have this giant cable like wrapping all over the place. You just have this tiny little thing that doesn't take up much room and plugs into your laptop as well as if I can find it. And I don't know where I put the other one. I already lost it, but they have another one that's a little bit longer so that you can have it if like you have your laptop on a, a stand or something and you need just a little bit longer of a cable than this guy. And it also came with an extra long one so that if you're at a workstation type setup and you need that extra cable to kind of wrap around a monitor or behind a, a PC or something like that, like it, it, you have that option. And I think that goes to show how much thought ZSA has put into this product. I still think these should be braided nylon cables, but just the fact that they gave you three different cables to accommodate different situations, that's a, a good light to shine on ZSA. And before I forget, I also wanted to show a comparison in size between the Voyager and the Moonlander. So just looking at them side by side, the Voyager is noticeably smaller than the Moonlander. It definitely makes it more portable. Not that the Moonlander is not portable. This still is a pretty portable keyboard, but let's put them in their cases just to compare what they look like when they're all packed up. And then I am going to put this cable in there just because I want to show that when you close this, like this is kind of in the way, at least if you have like a, a bigger cable that you're packing with you. And that would also include the TRRS cable that we'd want to stick in there. When I do end up packing this around with me, which I, I do plan on doing, I'll probably just have to stick this guy inside one half of the of the case right here. But this guy, and once again, this is another reason why I really think that this should be a, a nylon braided cable because it's kind of this rubbery material. It's a little harder to stick in there and it just kind of wants to like catch and like there's a lot of friction, so I don't know. You probably tell that I feel strongly that this should not be rubbery, it should be the nylon stuff, but anyway, so just stick that in there and there we go. And that closes up pretty nicely. You kinda, there's definitely like a bulge right there from the cable, which it's not ideal. Uh, with the, the Moonlander, I could always just stick my cables right here in the middle, but I feel like because this is in the way, that kind of bulges a little bit, and I feel like I'm kind of having to force it close in order to like get that to, to fit in there. Where with the Moonlander, in this case, there's so much space right here that I could always throw my cables right in the middle and just kind of fold it over and sandwich it in there and it just it fit really nicely. So, um, got my wings. Though I am not, well, I guess, okay, I should probably put the wings on to give a, a true full comparison. So, got one wing and there is the other wing and we'll stick them in there. And I'm not gonna include the cables, but just know, like I, I've done this plenty of times. Like the cables, they they fit in there. Like there's no problem. But let's see. So just close that, and then looking at them side by side, Moonlander definitely a bigger boy than this guy right here. Like the the Moonlander, it it kind of feels like it's on the edge of being too big. And I've mentioned this before. Like I've never had a problem just sticking this in my backpack. It like it, it fits in there, no problem. But this, like, this really feels a lot more compact, especially if I don't include that cable. Maybe I just throw this cable on the bottom of my backpack. It doesn't need to be in the case. But yeah, like that feels pretty good. Like that's pretty compact. And I know you can always get smaller, but, but this has good portability. I think like this, yeah, this is going to fit in my backpack real nice. And there you have it. This is the baby bear porridge. This is a... This is our uh, mama bear right here, and, and this right here is a uh, papa bear. <laughs> yep. Oh boy. Yeah, this thing is just really big. It does fit in my backpack, but um, yeah, it's 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 big. And I guess let me unpack all this just to bring up one other comparison with the Moonlander that I think is worth noting. Is that? 
there's something in here. Oh, there's a that. Not sure what that is for, but it's in this pocket. Does the other side have one? Does not feel like it. Nope, the other side does not have one. Hmm, that's weird. Maybe uh, one of you in the comments can tell me what the purpose of that is for in this pocket. Okay, now that that's put together and maybe I'll actually time lapse that part and then put a timer for how long it took me to take it out and set it up. But it, you know, what, it honestly, it felt pretty comparable to how long it would take me to set up the moon lander. And I never time myself how long it did take me to set up the moon lander when I would uh, actually go and uh, adjust the legs to tent it with the Allen wrench. Definitely just wasn't like pulling this thing out of a backpack and just plopping it down and turn on the Bluetooth and you know, you're ready to go. But I did like having these magnetic feet. It's kind of nice just being able to throw those on there. Anyways, uh, right. So the other thing that I said was worth noting is with this keyboard, the Voyager, it is like really thin. So when you set it down, my palms, they, they feel like they can rest on the table pretty comfortably. And that would especially be true if I just took off the legs and laid it flat. But that is kind of an improvement with the Moonlander. One of the criticisms that I had with the Moonlander is it has these uh, wings right here, which is pretty comfortable uh, for the palm to sit on there. Like it, it feels nice, but because this is so long, like you, you have to have it at least this far away from the edge of your table. And if you're like me, I, like to be able to pull mine a little bit closer, not all the way to the edge, but enough that this little wing would hang off the, the edge of my desk. And so that's ultimately why I ended up taking these off is just because I felt like I couldn't position this exactly where I wanted it to go. And that did mean that I didn't have that extra bit of palm support and it, you know, it is thicker. So it, kind of felt like, you know, you did have a little bit of this motion, which is really bad for, for any kind of RSI. I mean, it's not like terrible by any means, but, but you know, like I said, something that I think is worth noting. And I, I just have to say again, like this, it just, it feels so good to hold. This feels like a really high quality product. This ain't no Tesla where, you know, you have little gaps in the panel here or anything like that. Like this, this thing is manufactured very, very well. And it sits on the desk, it has, has that weight, so it's not going to slide around, doesn't feel cheap and flimsy. Yeah, this keyboard has given me a very, very good first impression. So much so that I am kind of putting the Kinesis Advantage on the, the shelf right now to see if I can work with this without my RSI symptoms flaring up and causing a ton of pain. And if that is the case, I will go back to the 360 because, like, honestly, I complain about the 360 a lot, but I, I think mostly because I got the Bluetooth model and it has a lot of Bluetooth connectivity issues. But if you get the Advantage 2 or the Advantage 360 that's split like this, but still wired, then I, I think a lot of the problems that I have with this keyboard kind of go away. And this is a very, very comfortable keyboard. I, I cannot understate that. Even like going from here on the Voyager to here in this keyboard, like this feels so comfortable. But I am just really digging this keyboard and I'm ready to give it a run for its money. And we'll see. I'm also still planning planning on seeing the Glove 80 sometime in October. It'll be past mid-October when I, I get it, but that is one that I'm also really, really excited to take a look at. I am still, like I've said, pretty wary of having such a, a small layout, and I feel like it's going to be kind of difficult to navigate around and like we'll we'll see but if I could get something as comfortable as the 360 but feels as good as the Voyager then that could be the winner. I also really like having the option of taking a small keyboard like this and tossing it in my backpack and taking it to work and not having to lug around a bigger keyboard like the 360 or the Glove 80. So this might be my keyboard to take to the office when I go into the office. But yeah, we will see. Oh, and of course, subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified of that video when it comes, whenever it comes. And if you stuck around to the end of this video, I genuinely really appreciate that. And that's what motivates me to continue making this content is seeing the interaction from all of you in the comments and knowing that 
I've been able to help some of you out. It sounds like maybe some of you have not been helped out, <laughs> and I'm really sorry if that's you. Uh, but yeah, if you like the Moonlander, I think you will probably love this keyboard. So far, I am really liking it. And at some point, I will come out with another update on this once I've had more time to play around with it and really get comfortable with it. And until then, thank you and have a good day, and I'll see you next time.